Welcome back, my friends. Currently, we're on day 263 of Russia's disastrous invasion of Ukraine, and the Russian military has officially broken an 80-year-old record for most military retreats in a single year, previously held by France. Of course, I'm joking here, my apologies to France, but it is stunning to consider how much and how often the Russian military has retreated so far this year in 2022. Let's just recap everything that's happened. Back in April, the Russian military decided to retreat and give up on taking the city of Kyiv, give up on taking the Sumy region. It was then back in June that they decided to retreat and give up on controlling Snake Island. After the sinking of the Moskova, the Black Sea Fleet basically decided to hide behind Crimea for fear of Ukraine's land-based anti-ship missiles. Fast forward then to September. This is when their Kharkiv front completely collapsed and they decided to retreat once again. And now we are in the month of November and the Russians have finally retreated and given up on the north bank of the Dnipro River. So it seems like every two months, Russia makes another decision to retreat from something. Where will be the next big push by Ukrainians? Uh, where will the next goodwill gesture from Russia be? Uh, my guess is probably close to Melitopol. But in the meantime, let's celebrate once again the liberation of the city of Kherson. Uh, they're on day two or three of being free once again. And I want to show you a couple clips from mainstream media, the first one being from CNN. Let's watch about one minute of this together. Yeah, this is Leila. absolute euphoria here at the moment. I'm using the phone and we're communicating by the camera and by satellite. It's a, it's a bit of a chaotic mess. There's no phone signals here. The Russians have taken all that down, destroyed the, the electricity, the water, the gas. Everything here is in a bad situation, but everyone here is out celebrating in the, in the square here. People are wearing the Ukrainian flag. They're hugging the soldiers. Uh, they've come out to see how it is to have freedom. And I'm joined here by Yulia and Olga, and we're going to have a quick conversation about how it's been. Tell us about the last eight months, Yulia, under occupation. It was a really hard time for everyone. Every Ukrainian family waited for our soldiers, for our army. So how does it feel now today to see them? It's amazing, wonderful. Thank you very much for supporting us. We feel every day your support. Thank you so much. Can I hug you? Sure. <laughs> Thank you very much. So it does look like thousands or maybe even tens of thousands of residents of the city successfully avoided mass deportation uh, these last couple weeks as Russia has been planning this withdrawal. Here's another clip I want to share with you of a reporter from Sky News as he enters the city. Well, this is absolutely incredible. We're on the outskirts of Kherson now. We're being given a military escort. And as you can see, people are absolutely Incredible scenes here. They're waving the Ukrainian flag. Um, we're literally just on the outskirts, very early in the morning. Go great. Go great. Okay. Um, Reporters and soldiers couldn't even get into the city without being completely swarmed by grateful people. So just to recap, once again, on September 30th, the Russian government declared through an illegal annexation that Kherson, the city of Kherson, was Russian territory and Russia would be there forever. Six weeks later, on November 9th, they made the announcement that they would be uh, surrendering the city. So for those of you who don't understand Russian, if we go on Google, apparently in Russian the word forever, when translated to Ukrainian, means until 11th of November. Now, the Russian forces have pulled out of the north bank of the Dnipro River, and they've left a lot of stuff behind. Residents and Ukrainian soldiers keep finding uh, previous dugouts where 
the Russians were hoarding weapons and personal belongings. Uh, here's a picture of one of these weapon caches, and you can see in the background there are electronics and TVs that Russian soldiers were stealing. Here's a clip. Uh, I'm not going to play it, but I'll link everything down below. As always, they uh, came across the helicopter. There does appear to be damage to the helicopter, which is probably why the Russian military left it behind. But if the Ukrainians can drag this back to maybe Poland or Lithuania, perhaps it can be repaired and then put to good use with uh, Ukrainian pilots. The unofficial reports coming out is that Hundreds of tanks, uh, fighting vehicles, self-propelled guns, trucks, vehicles, and other equipment has been abandoned by the Russians, most of it inoperable or damaged. But once again, if over the next couple months, Ukraine can get that dragged back to a safe distance and then properly repaired and maintained, I think a lot of NATO allies would be happy to help with repairs and perhaps in a couple months' time, all of this equipment can return to the battlefield, but this time on the side of the Ukrainians. There's also been several weapon caches that have been discovered with unexpended munitions. Once again, all of this will be put to good use, uh, used against the Russians. And the Ukrainians have also been finding Russian soldiers hiding in uh, civilian clothing, whether they were instructed to remain behind or they chose to desert by just taking off their uniforms and trying to blend into a crowd. I, I can't tell you, but there are TikToks of Russian soldiers who have been taken prisoner who didn't get to the other side of the river. So Putin is facing a massive humiliating defeat as Russia announced this retreat from the capital, regional capital city of Kherson. Uh, how is Kremlin State TV uh, digesting all of this? Let's watch about one minute of this clip together uh, of the, basically, the recap of how the retreat went. Украинские боевики, разумеется, всю ночь били по переправам через Днепр из американских СЗО «Хаймерс». Украинский ЦПЦО параллельно распространял данные об окружении российской 40-тысячной группировки. Потом говорили про 20 тысяч. Все оказалось фейк. Or in other words, uh, the Russian military has victoriously retreated and the Ukrainian military chases after them in a panic. Here's another bizarre clip I have to share with you that appeared on Kremlin TV, but, uh, well, just, we're gonna watch, we're gonna watch about 30 seconds of this together. So this is a group, uh, a spontaneous group of concerned citizens who decided to hold this uh, rally on an empty street, and uh, they're calling for Washington, D.C. to be nuked. And uh, in the song, My Apologies to Queen, they're ripping off the beats from uh, We Will, We Will Rock You, but... <laughs> I mean, he says, we will go to heaven as martyrs. Uh, Russia has lost their mind. <sighs> what else did the Russians do as they pulled out of Kherson? I did mention there was an explosion at the Novokokovka hydroelectric power plant, and it looks like the Russians deliberately brought down three sections uh, on the... This is the North Bank, so this is the territory now controlled by the Ukrainians. And good news, Russia isn't blowing up the dam, but they did detonate a small section of it to prevent Ukrainian forces from uh, getting across it. I don't, I don't know how this is going to work. Uh, artillery and 
high Mars rounds can still easily cross this river, so if Russians are holding a garrison on the other side trying to hold the dam, I don't, I don't know what the Ukrainians are going to do with them. There actually is a video, CCTV, I guess the Russians released it, of them blowing up the dam. Uh, those three sections that you can see in this satellite image right here. I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. Speaking of uh, bridges, here is the Anatovsky Bridge. Uh, several sections of it have been completely brought down. The Russians did this deliberately. Um, they don't want the Ukrainians repairing it and then using it to cross the river. Not that Ukraine's going to do that. They're going to go around uh, through the Zaporizhia front to eventually liberate the other side of this, uh, this, this territory. Russians also sabotaged and destroyed as much as they could in the time they had prior to abandoning the city. They uh, destroyed the Kherson TV tower. It was uh, detonated and collapsed. In addition, uh, as you suspect, there would be lots of landmines placed down, lots of booby traps. Here's a picture taken by a Ukrainian soldier of a landmine laying in a road, and there is a landmine underneath it. Now, of course, the Ukrainians know all of Russia's tricks. They're not going to be fooled by something like this, but maybe to a civilian who just sees this in the middle of the road, they might try and push it out of the way, triggering the mine underneath. So Ukrainian civilians, this area is not safe to return. I do want to share a couple clips with you of a, uh, a British national who has been fighting for Ukraine on the front lines in Kherson for months now. His name is Maser Gifford. If you want to follow him on Twitter, he, he posts update videos from the front line daily. And he's currently with the 131st Recon Battalion. But uh, in this clip, they're detonating some of these uh, mines left by the Russian forces. That was a big one. Here comes the raid. Here comes the raid. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no it's too far away. We're good. Okay. Next one. <laughs> like, nice. <laughs> Welcome to Ukraine, baby. That's okay, yeah. It's not Ukraine. Oh, how big that was? That was a big one. And here are Macer's thoughts on Russia's retreat. Uh, we're going to watch about one minute of this clip together of him uh, showing a local bridge used by civilians that Russia chose to destroy. <laughs> The Russians have blown a number of the bridges into the towns, which is causing a huge amount of inconvenience civilians to civilians who are trying to get water for their family. So the Russians, what they did was they obviously ran away from the Ukrainian troops. But they blew up crucial infrastructure. And I'm not talking about crucial infrastructure for just for the military. They blew up everything that might be useful to the civilians as well. It's really sad to see Russia terrorizing the people of Ukraine. It's uh, some comfort though, because although this is a temporary pain, it's gonna cause hardship to a lot of ordinary people. If you look behind me, and I filmed a video earlier, there's two signs up there. And the signs say, Russia will be here forever, says uh, one of the signs. Well, what a joke, Russia fled. What a joke, Russia fled. And what else did Russia do that is morally reprehensible? They, they looted all of the galleries and museums and stole all of Ukraine's cultural and, and, and historical artifacts. So it's estimated that the Russians stole about 15,000 pieces of art from Kherson's galleries and museums. You know what other military force invaded their neighbors and then stole all of their cultural and historical and artworks? Uh, the Nazis. The Nazis did that. Uh, I really don't see how people who support Russia keep missing all of these parallels and connections with everything that the Russian military is and does with that of uh, 1930s, 1940s Germany. So the question that people are asking, the people want to know is, what comes next after Kherson? This was a 
huge victory, huge accomplishment. And I really do think that the weather is against both sides. I think as we're now into mid-November, going into December, January, and February, it might just be too cold uh, to continue these advances. Uh, there's still going to be artillery duels. Uh, the Ukrainians are going to continue high marsing all of Russia's positions. But as far as a, another big, uh, exciting advance like it was in Kharkiv or Kherson, I don't think that's going to happen over the next two or three months. It's just too cold. But I do think that uh, Ukraine is going to use this time to their advantage uh, in order to build up forces in the Zaporizhia front. That is the key to liberating all this territory down here. They have to push south from Zaporizhia to retake the city of Melitopol. That is the road that then leads to Crimea. Additionally, if they can slice down here, they can start pushing east and eventually retake uh, Mariupol. It is possible in the next couple weeks that they will also gain control of the city of Svatovov. It's not that far from the current front lines and maybe Russia will just uh, continue scaling back their ambitions. But the Russians were hoping for propaganda wins this week. They sent tens of thousands, thousands of their own soldiers to, to, their, to their death in the Donbass region as they've been continuously trying to take the city of Bakhmut. Uh, they've also been pushing down here near the city of Pavlivka. I think Russian high command, while they were going to be retreating from the North Bank and the Kherson region, they wanted some kind of propaganda win, maybe taking the city of Bakhmut, but the Ukrainians continue to hold. The Ukrainians continue to keep pushing them back. The other discussion that's going to be had over the next couple months is, can we please give the Ukrainians a couple of these longer range attackums missiles uh, from HIMARS launchers on the North Bank? All of the Crimean Peninsula is in play. All of Russia's military assets would then be vulnerable to attack, and more than likely Russia would just abandon the peninsula. If they have jets and helicopters and ships that are just going to get destroyed, they can't keep them there. It's about giving the Ukrainians that capability. Things are only going to get worse for Russia over the next three months as NATO continues to resupply the Ukrainian forces and uh, their military increases in capability while the Russian economic and political system back home continues to collapse. Last couple feel-good clips I have for you concerns I hope I'm saying this correctly, babusias, babusias, this means grandmother in Ukrainian, and there's lots of clips, lots of TikToks and uh, real videos of these elderly women uh, showing their appreciation to these Ukrainian soldiers. So the first clip I have for you is of a Ukrainian defender showing on his phone a Russian tank that he destroyed, and uh, this uh, Ukrainian granny is very impressed. Very impressive. The next clip that went viral is of a uh, Ukrainian granny who has been uh, daily keeping track of how many Russian soldiers have been killed on this small piece of paper. She watches the nightly news in which I, I guess they give updates and then she quickly goes to her paper to write down the additional number of Russian soldiers that died that day. <laughs> so let's watch about 20 seconds of this. <laughs> Okay. 
This granny is serious about keeping track of uh, Ukraine's victories. The final clip that went vi viral is of a Ukrainian soldier who liberated his own grandmother in the city of Kherson, and this is the moment they reunited. <laughs> That's pretty, that's pretty powerful to watch. That's all for this update video. Glory to the heroes, glory to Ukraine. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support my channel. Comments or questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care, be safe.